so the Nobel Prize last year was awarded for protein folding, yeah. AI driven um, an analysis. How explain to people why that is significant, and and where do you? How much do you think that particular achievement is 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 going to advance biotechnology, and what remains ahead of it as far as even greater molecule selection? Yeah, no, the these guys, it, it, what what they did is they made possible, um, and and we talked about preclinical. This is pre preclinical. Right. <laughs> this is how you even. This is figuring out what you're going to do. This is figuring out what you're going to do. If you can make figuring out what you're going to do much much faster which they did, um, you're going to have the opportunity to, the way I think of it is you've got like a mountain of opportunity, but it's shown a light on just a limited number of things where you can see the opportunity and take advantage of the opportunity. I think it's a start, but I think they've done, I, I think it's great that they were uh, recognized. Do you think this is the most important thing that from a promise perspective that AI is, has brought to medicine since? So far. Yeah. yeah I okay. do. So far. Yeah. And and so what do you think would be the next mega unlock? Would it be on the data front? Uh, would it be a predictive model? Where, like, How could we yeah. shorten a clinical trial by 60%? Ooh. You know, anything where AI can help us with outcome measures outcome measures. I, I I told you that my husband's an HIV doc. When he, we were both at Bristol-Myers Squibb, I was doing two by two measurements of tumors on x-rays for yep. Taxol, and he was looking at viral load. Viral load allowed us to have 20 HIV drugs in like five years. It was crazy how good it was. I want a viral load for everything. You know, I don't want a two you, by you need two a good thing. Biomarker. We need a good biomarker for more things, and yeah, and mm. you were talking about all the different co uh, um, types of breast cancer. So think about what you just talked about with breast cancer that you have ER positive, ER negative, HER two positive, triple negative. You know, there's all these. What if actually there's fifteen? Yeah. There undoubtedly are, right? There we know probably there are. are. Yeah. So then you're in 15 trials, but you only need 10 patients in each trial because it's so obvious you have the perfect remedy for each of those patients. You know, that you, there's a, I always think of it as switches on, turn it off, yep. and you see clinical benefit. Anything we do that sets up like that, especially if we can not just measure switch on, but switch off. That's why viral load is so powerful. Sue, so what's your level of optimism or pessimism around liquid biopsies? And do you think that AI can help us with these? I have been um, pretty negative um, based on the data. I yeah. just have not seen the data that suggests to me that um, we're. And is this on the helping. sensitivity front? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I'm. Can AI help us? Possibly. Possibly. Seems it, 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 the problem is like just really hard. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. do you think the problem is tumors don't shed enough DNA? I think that appears to be the problem mm -hmm. because if they did, I think it would work. Yeah. Um, and it's also, so that's the most important problem. The other problem is something that I think we all tend to, to underestimate because um, I love the concept of prevention. And, you know, I, I think that the Make America Healthy Again in part is we'll go to preventive therapy and stop yes. all these. And, and you know, I understand that in oncology, we've often celebrated tiny successes, but you can't have big successes before you have tiny successes. I, I don't, um, I don't think it's easy to do early detection. I think early, you know, the only two things that are, well, now three, colon can, colonoscopy yep. works. Uh, for cervical cancer, a pap smear works. Yep. Um, even better, HPV vaccine is my ad. Um, and now you can do a spiral CT for lung cancer. Yeah. I'm not even using one handful of fingers. And we've been trying to do early detection as long as I've been an oncologist. I would add to that, I agree with you, by the way, I would add to that 
PSA in the hands of someone who understands what to do with it. So PSA by itself, pretty bad. PSA density when you know prostate volume and PSA velocity when you have serial measurements starts to become very predictive. So you take a man who does not, who has not had a pro prostate biopsy and you stratify his PSA according to PSA density. Mm -hmm. The ability to predict if he has a Gleason 3 plus 3 or 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 3 is really quite high. high. And at least you can then stratify those patients more quickly into a PHI or a 4K and ultimately decide do they need a multiparametric MRI and you go down that path. So it's not turnkey and I completely understand why they've said we're going to make no recommendation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, I do take comfort in knowing yeah. that, you know, I take it's sad to me, but I take comfort in knowing Wait, too many men are dying of prostate cancer. Yeah. Um, it, it should not be the third leading cause of cancer death. It yeah. um, and yet I understand that it's a big ask to get every doctor fully up to speed on the algorithm. You know what you just said? That's something that, uh, you know, if someone wanted to start a company, they could simplify that and make something more turnkey yes, for patients there's, there's and physicians. there's a way to do this. There's but a way to, but when, when to you go through When you go that. through the four leading causes of cancer death, two of them don't need to be on the list. Colon cancer mm -hmm. and prostate cancer don't need to be on the list. They shouldn't be on the list. Now, yes. lung is going to be a hard, you know, I think we can reduce it a lot, but it's going to be awfully it's tough. tough. And breast is still really tough because it's not Halsteadian. It yeah. doesn't have that straightforward progression from polyp to cancer. No, it's true. And well, I well, that's the neat thing is you can just take out the polyp. I mean, I've, yeah. th that's always been the beauty of colonoscopy. So, we're, we're, what is your level of optimism that we could ever? So, so instead of just talking about a broad liquid biopsy, let's just talk about breast cancer. Mm -hmm. What do you think it would take? And do you think it would be a protein? Do you think it would be DNA? Do you think it would be RNA? If you had to guess, what would be the earliest signature in the blood of different breast cancers? Where would you put your money? I think it'd be interesting to look at protein. I think that would be um, more Think I'd about how money. that would change breast cancer treatment. It would, it would be tremendous, yeah.